Hey everybody, welcome to my Pokemon plus Nobunaga's Ambition, the Let's Play. I'm Diogen Z, and I have phenomenal news for you people. Many have asked in the comments section, is this game going to be localized and available worldwide? Well, at least for America, it's going to be coming out in June, I believe June 18th. And it's going to be called Pokemon Conquest. That's freaking amazing and fantastic. And with such a quick release date, usually there's at least a year in between um, Japanese release dates and worldwide. At least it's worked that way in the past with the main RPG series. But it is very apparent that Nintendo and the Pokemon Company and whoever the crossover company was... They had this in mind from the start. They wanted to bring it over to everyone. It's just, of course, it starts in Japan. So I am so overjoyed that that is the case. That means... Huh, jeez. That is... It is going to be a Pokemon chalk-filled year this year, if you realize that. Because not only do we now have... Pokemon Conquest to look forward to, which is just this, Nobunaga's ambition, except we can understand the story, which is epic, because then I don't have to make up bullshit lines whenever anyone is talking, but hey, that has its own perks too. Uh, but we also have Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, which are supposed to be sequels to Black and White. And that's going to be fascinating. I don't know if it's, uh, I do hope it's a completely new adventure. You know, I hope it's not the same areas we traversed with a very similar story. Maybe Team, uh, what was it, Galactic? No, not Team Galactic. Yeah, no, it's not Team Galactic. Wow. Ends Team. That's all I know. I can't believe I, Team Plasma. No, yeah, Team Plasma. See, there's so many evil teams, they just all sort of wash together. I don't know what this old dude's asking me, but that's one of the benefits of localization. That was the best thing I saw on Cerebi today. I decided to go on there to see who we're going to be facing today, who's the Bouchot leader that uh, we're going to be taking down next. And it's going to be Yoshimoto! He's the ruler of the Bug Nation. But I do recommend training up people before you go out on a limb directly to the next main Bouchou, or I'm so used to saying that, but Bouchou leader. Someone corrected me in the comments, and I thank you for that, because if I mispronunciate anything, I'd like to be corrected so I could do it well. But take at least one nation to train before you go on to the next leader. Just because you want to make sure that you have a good trumping power over him or her. And we've got plenty of power. We have a... <laughs> We're facing a giant Kabuki man with Pinecone, or Pineco. And angry grandmothers, too. Huh, who really runs the nation? Oh, don't hurt my pineapple! I might have to get jelly rolls! This complexion is not as easy as you think! This isn't paint! It's my face! Ugh. Imagine if your face was that bad. Blanche White from being hollered at by an old hag grandma who stuffs you full of jelly rolls and only allows you one Pokemon, and that fucking Pokemon is Pineco. Oh, it's not fair! This Pineco just looks at me. He just drops pine needles sometimes, and I step on them. Oh, it would not be a good existence. So, that's interesting. In, uh, this giant Kabuki Man's land, we have to smack around these Bucky Balls, kind of, 
And they actually will do damage if any Pokemon is in their path. Which includes your Pokemon, too. The opponent can use them to their advantage, of course, because it's their field. But this is another pretty simple battlefield that's easy to grasp in concept and easy to get a good control over. What ends up happening is the enemy undoes them undoes undoes themselves <laughs> undoes themselves handily because randomly these smacking balls will drop from the sky and boom now they're suddenly in the line of fire when they weren't. You don't have control of when that happens. Maybe I've been lucky fighting this guy every time that I've done it. But uh yeah, I don't uh I don't think that it's such a great idea to have them fall in a pattern that is not good for this leader. He should be able to control it somewhat. But hey, he can't even control what his grandma feeds him. Stuffing them with jelly rolls. Porking them up. Like my porker here, Tepig. Except... Ah! Damn him! Yoshimoto may not be as strong as my Tepig, and he is a pig for locking up my Pokemon. So let's demonstrate the ball smacking capabilities. Oh, look at that massive damage just from smacking his balls. Oh man, what an irritable guy this must be. But he's not as strong as my powerful Tepig, but he does have devious tricks and traps. So kind of like back in the Grass Nation when we fell into those pit hole traps and we were left indisposed and at the will of our advers- or not our adversary, our nemeses, um, you know, they are going to unleash or try. Oh no! Oh good, it's only an ice type move. I was going to say if it was water I would be boned. They're going to try and gang up on you now. He's got a whole Kabuki crew with him, too. Uh-oh. No! Ha-ha. Oh, Why did you do that, brother? It was because you didn't have my complexion! Crazy white-faced people. You know, I don't know the story behind Kabuki, and don't take this as insulting. I think it's just very uh, humorous, and you know you're meant to laugh when the artists and game developers depict this guy as humongously expressionate and eyes bulging out of his head when Grandma gets sharp. So Tepig's kind of useless right now, but we still have Darumaka, Charmander. Oh, no longer Prinplup. Come on. bullshit. Clearly that's bullshit. When something is bullshit, I need to double slap the ones who are making it that way. Ha! You're not even worth smacking a ball across the field. Oh, and I get to move again. Present. If you train up in the Fire Nation before coming here, you'll have all the Pokemon you need. Damn it! Double Poison Sting. I see what he's doing. He's trying to lock Darumaka into close quarters. Not gonna work! Your Pineco, your precious Pineco, is still exposed. You know, it's interesting. I'm not sure if pine cones, speaking of pine echo, which is obviously a pine cone Pokemon, I don't know if pine cones are the type of seeds that need to be burned in a forest fire before they can germinate. I know that um, redwoods are like that. They have a seed that has such a tough shell that it can't sprout and germinate until there is a natural forest fire or an induced one. Um, 
but that hasn't been happening because forest fires are put out. But uh, they're finding out that, oh, actually some trees need the forest to burn. That's something that's kind of a hard concept for people to grasp if uh, they hear about Smokey the Bear. Only you can stop forest fires. Yeah, well, Smokey, they're kind of necessary. I shouldn't have done that. But they're kind of necessary because they return nutrients to the soil in way of the dead vegetation that falls to the floor. And those seeds that need to be scarified, basically, by fire, can then sprout. And new trees can take form. The dead growth gives way, gives its last remaining nutrients, and the new is formed. We have a difficulty sometimes understanding and explaining these cycles, but uh, the more people know, the better off it can be. But I don't know if pine cones are that way. Not sure if pine cones need a burn to get started. They, they very well might, because I know in my hometown, or at least my home state, Jersey, the pine barrens are often controlled, uh, controlled with burning. So that might be something. Not sure. I'll have to Google that after this video. That's the wonderful thing about the internet. It's the age of no more questioning, just find answers. But you gotta be careful, because there are false answers out there. Wikipedia, for example. And people who would like to sell you a bit of goods that is bullshit. But there's plenty of free sources of fun information out there like this walkthrough. So, man, I gotta decide what my upload schedule is gonna be because that is so much more Pokemon than I expected to be playing at this time. I might have to put off my Emerald walkthrough for maybe the fall. Because I do want to get through a lot of this game in the Japanese version. Just so you guys have a good depiction for when the game comes out. You'll have a good understanding of what you can expect before you even enter in your own world. You don't even have to watch my English walkthrough. You could just go to this one and see, okay, who was here? It doesn't even matter what name it is. Because obvious, obviously he's not going to be Yoshimoto in the English version. But he will have the same Pokemon. Ha! <laughs> We defeated the Tyrant Granny. And we won! Now we know who really was owning that nation. It was the Vicious Grandmother. Big boosts for everyone. Oh, and we even got a follower. Fantastic. Oh, you broke my pinnacle! Shut up. Wow! Oh, I can't believe you speak that way to me, Grandma. Believe it, we lost. Yep. Ironclad heart. But we got an ironclad hero that I will not be taking. <laughs> I don't want to see Waddle Guy. It's a little too weak for me. All right, Oichi is proud of us. We're conquering lots of regions, or nations, sorry. What's happening? Something in the landscape stirs. A powerful force of ground. And a powerful force of psychic emerges. The two... Titans await the great Bouchot leader, Diogenzi. I don't think you can beat him! No, definitely you can't beat him. You need more training. Alright, well, we've got uh, some new powerful foes to take on in the next episodes. So I'll see you there, guys.